Hey everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, we have a bonus broadcast today, which we did not announce to our subscribers, and I'll tell you why. And well, happy Halloween, by the way. So my guest at the 11 o'clock show, the adorable Marina Grubik, she changed the clocks back yesterday in Croatia. And so she was late for my show and I was freaking out because I couldn't reach her because I couldn't figure out how to call her. So I contacted Lissa Maris and Chris Kendall, who set up this wonderful week of raw food chefs as part of the ultimate raw vegan bundle. And I said, I got to go. Somebody's got to go live. And so somebody who you're going to meet in a minute, Rebecca Mutzel of the Perfect Food Company in New York volunteered. But then as soon as she volunteered, Marina showed up and I felt really bad. So I didn't want her to have to wait until April. So we're bringing her on right now. And she's going to talk about something I know nothing about, which is the benefits of microgreens. I know a little bit about sprouting because we've had Doug Evans on and we've had uh, John Kohler on, but we're going to find out a little bit more about this as the Ultimate Raw Vegan Bundle continues. This is the second to last day. Please welcome Rebecca to the show. It's very nice to meet you. And thank you for volunteering volunteering to go on when I didn't think I had a guest. <laughs> Thank you so much, Chef AJ. This was so serendipitous. And I, she just messaged me and she was like, does anybody want to go on live with Chef AJ? And I happened to be looking at my phone that minute. So I was like, yeah, I'll go. <laughs> That's so great. Well, spontaneity can lead to great things. Totally, totally. So this is going to be great. I have a lot to share with you guys and um, I think it's going to blow your mind. So this is a perfect, I can't wait till April. I have to be honest. It could not wait till April. It needed to come now. Um, and I can't wait to share it with you guys. Great. So, um, you, got, you got some green stuff in front of you. I, I'm, I'm assuming that's not for the trick or treaters. Yeah, not for the trick or treaters, even though it wouldn't be put, I wouldn't put it past me to give them these sprouts. Um, okay, cool. So let me show you guys a beautiful tray of our sunflower microgreens. So here we have all of these delicious, gorgeous sunflower greens. Each one of these little sprouts would grow into a sunflower. It is the 10 day old baby of sunflower at its most nutritious stage when it's at its baby stage. So it has the same seeds that would grow. These seeds right here in the soil, these are the same seeds that would grow to become a sunflower, um, but it's only 10 days old. And it has the highest level of protein than any other green when it's in this sprouted stage. So for those of you who are looking to be more plant-based or get are always asking the question of where do I get my protein from, um, this is a really good resource for how to get protein microgreens and sprouts. So just a little bit about me really quick. Um, my company is Perfect Foods and uh, we are growers in New York. So we are the world's largest wheatgrass and microgreen growers. And uh, my dad, he started, this is actually my family's business, and my dad started growing wheatgrass and microgreens in Brooklyn in 1982. So we have been in the industry for 40 years. And um, my dad was actually the first urban farmer, and he was growing it in the, the basement of a kosher butcher shop in Brooklyn. Um, and we sell it to over 400 juice bars and health food stores in the New York uh, region. So we have a really huge operation in Goshen, New York, about an hour upstate from Manhattan, where we sell wheatgrass and microgreens to the entire region. And um, we are thriving, especially even during COVID. And when COVID hit, we decided to take a little bit of a turn with our business and be more directed toward you, the consumers, in educating you. So um, because we realized that people needed home deliveries, first of all, not, nobody was going to the stores, and people needed education. So we started hardcore educating. That's how we got connected with Lissa and Chris and this whole community. We always were behind the scenes in the industry supplying the greens, but now we were, are started to become more in the forefront to educate and be speakers on the benefits of these products and teach people how to use them in an easy and effective way and also how to grow them at home themselves. That's so cool. So what are the benefits and what's it in between the sprouts and microgreens? Okay, so these are sprouts. These are lentil sprouts. And the sprouts are the three day old um, baby where you just take the seeds and you soak them in water and then you drain them and rinse them for a couple of days. And then a little tail comes out as you can see here. And that is the sprout. So sprouts are three days old about and they are just grown in water. They don't need any soil. Microgreens are the 10 day old plant 
and they are grown in a medium. So they are grown in soil, compost, coconut husk, um, a hydroponic pad. We of course are huge, huge, huge proponents of organic compost. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. But um, yeah, microgreens are the 10 day old baby of the plant grown in a compost. So they have all the extra minerals from the compost and extra chlorophyll from the light because it's put under the light. That's so cool. Why is it so important to include these in our diet and how much every day should we include? So it's really important to include these into your diet because we are not eating enough greens. Even for people who are in the vegan and plant-based lifestyle, oftentimes don't eat enough greens. And um, by eating these, you, you're having about 20 to 100 times the amount of nutrients as the adult plant. So if you wanna just cut off a little bit and add it into your salad or into your smoothie or uh, into a sandwich or even just eat it as a snack like this, you are getting a whole ton more of nutrients in a bioavailable way than you would normally in your lifestyle. So um, one of the main things that it does is it gives your body a variety of vitamins and minerals in exactly the right proportion for what your body needs in that you're not taking supplements um, of powders and pills in order to get these concentrated amount of nutrients. You're actually getting it through real food so your body can digest it better. <clears throat> so um, if you are looking to get more nutrients and if you feel um, tired, lethargic, if you feel bloated, um, if you feel like you want to lose weight, if you feel, uh, if you have inflammation, if you're having aging effects, if you're having trouble with fertility, um, all of these things are, you know, raw foods and, and all, all healing foods from the earth help with, but what wheatgrass and sprouts and microgreens are, are like the next level of that. So they are like the really concentrated version of, um, earth because it's the baby of it. So all the nutrients needed to sustain the sunflower is in this one little tiny leaf. So when you're looking to really heal and really get a high concentration of nutrients in a quick amount of time and energy and effort, that's when you go to microgreens and sprouts. So I use about a handful in every meal um, minimum, and that's to make a salad, that's to make a smoothie or just to snack on. That's so cool. Do they taste different depending on what the seed was? Yes. So let's see what I have for you. Hang on. Um, I don't know if anyone has ever talked to you about broccoli microgreens or sprouts, have they? Have right. Well, them? yeah, they, you hear a lot about them. Something called sulfuroflane or something that's in it that people need or want or. Yep. Yep. So this is a ton of broccoli sprouts. This is like gold for anybody who knows about broccoli sprouts. They would be like, oh, because they're like, you know, this whole thing is about, uh, I think $20. So, you know, wow, yeah, they're, they're gold. So, um, broccoli sprouts are known to have about 40 times the amount of sulforaphane, which is an anti-cancer compound. And John Hopkins University and the University of Maryland did a lot of research on the specific compound called sulforaphane, and they found it to be one of the most healing agents um, for not only cancer, but for autism symptoms, for anti-aging, for anxiety, for schizophrenia, and for overall supporting your immune system. So much so that they wanted to patent it. That's how powerful and significant they found the research to be. Um, and they obviously couldn't because it's food. So that's kind of why microgreens and sprouts became so popular and people started knowing about them more. So in the past about year or two years, it has really blown up. And the reason for that is, is if you think about it, right, like veganism and plant-based food has increased by like 500% in the last five years. So what's the future is raw veganism. And what is the pinnacle of raw veganism is greens. And what's the pinnacle of greens is microgreens. So it's really just the future of where every, everything is gonna be pointing to having as many microgreens and sprouts in your diet as possible. Um, and it's happening now and, you know, join the, join the trend. <laughs> oh, that is so cool. How long has this really been around? We're starting to know about it more. How long have, have people really been doing this? So since the beginning of time, I mean, even in, in Egypt, Egyptian times, people have been sprouting. That is what food is, is sprouting. That's what, um, if you think about what the animals and the horses are eating, they're eating the babies of the plant, they're eating the sprouts. Like it's kind of intuitive that we know that the baby of the plant and the young plant is what is the most nutritious and what's gonna give us that immediate energy. Um, and in World War II, 
um, they were using it for healing in, in the war. But once they started getting into biotics and more medicine, they kind of forgot about all of the medicinal herbs that they were using. They were using wheatgrass and they were using sprouts. Um, and they were doing a lot of research at that time that they kind of just forgot of because they got like penicillin. <laughs> and um, now they're realizing that it's time to come back to it because as you guys know, the antibiotics actually cause a lot more, can in some ways cause a lot of harm because it causes a lot of uh, disruption in the gut. So um, when you have too many antibiotics, your gut health and your probiotics are all messed up and your bacteria in your gut is not healthy. And then now we need to, and that what, that's what causes brain fog and that's what causes um, disease and that's what causes uh, candida and all these problems that we ache, aching and inflammation. So what we have to do now is go back to what we originally knew uh, which is about sprouts and wheatgrass and actually heal that with them. So yeah, we, they've been doing this for a really long time. And um, the, really the mother of wheatgrass and sprouts is Anne Wigmore. And Anne Wigmore, she was from Lithuania. She was in the war and her grandmother was teaching her about it. Um, she actually healed herself from gangrene with wheatgrass because they like threw her, her out on the grass and she started just like taking the grass and putting it on it. And she healed herself. She then healed herself with from cancer um, with a raw food diet. And she created the Hippocrates uh, raw food diet. Have you ever heard of Hippocrates? Absolutely. Brian yeah. Clement. Yep. 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 So um, he, she created the, the Hippocrates raw food diet and she created an institute in Boston. This was in the 1900s. And um, she healed a ton of people in and out of that institute. She also traveled to the whole entire world going to hospitals and healing people with a strictly raw vegan diet that was really concentrated in wheatgrass and sprouts. So her diet consists of having two ounces of wheatgrass in the morning, two ounces of wheatgrass in the afternoon, and having sprouts in your juices and salads all day long. So that's pretty much the two main components of her healing diet is wheatgrass and microgreens and sprouts. Um, and of course, you can even do implants and enemas and things like this just to really alkalize your body and cleanse and detox it. Is wheatgrass, um, if, if somebody can't have gluten, can they have wheatgrass? Because isn't it often barley? Yeah, so wheatgrass is gluten-free and the the blade itself does not have any gluten because gluten develops at a later stage. So much so that I actually have a customer that has celiac that gets our wheatgrass and microgreens every single week. He gets about two trays of wheatgrass and a whole tray of sunflower like this. And one day when I was delivering to him, I was like, what are you using this for? And he was like, I have celiac and it's the only thing that keeps my pain down. So really interesting. Um, you, you never know how powerful this stuff can be. Wow, people are asking if you're related to Steve Meyerowitz. Oh my gosh, um, Steve Meyerowitz is not, I'm not related to him, but this, the Sprout brothers are a close friend of mine. They're his sons um, and I'm very close with them. We kind of like grew up together. It's kind of like the Sprout families. Um, so Steve Meyerowitz, my dad knew him very well. And he, at the time that my dad started his business in Brooklyn um, in 1982, he was growing wheatgrass and microgreens. He was educating people on the Upper West Side in Manhattan and making like these sprout parties where people were learning about all of this. So that was 40 years ago we were doing this and only now is it like becoming more and more cool. So we've been late to the game. Um, but yeah, I know the Sprout Brothers, they're great and it's all kind of part of the same community. Great. Uh, there's a, Pat says, where were you in Brooklyn in 1982? I was a living foodist in Brooklyn Heights at the time. Oh, wow. Well, it wasn't me, obviously. It was my dad, but he was in, um, he was in, he lived in, in Sheepshead Bay and he was in Brooklyn, Bayside, Bayside, Bayside. No. Why is, why am I Brooklyn Heights? Something like this? Yeah. Brooklyn Heights. <laughs> well, Kathy says, I've seen sprouted quinoa sold in a package like regular quinoa. Do the sprouts retain their nutrition when they stop growing as in the case of sprouted quinoa? Um, do the sprouts retain their nutrition once they're sprouted? They're even more so nutri nutritious. I guess, I guess like if they're in a package at the store, they're not going to keep growing. They're not perishable once they're in the... Oh, yeah. So you don't have, they don't have to be keep, they don't have to continue to grow in order to have a high nutrient density. So even once they're sprouted and they have that little tail, they have a, a high nutrient density. So it's like the broccoli sprouts versus the microgreens. Um, they're very similar in nutrition. It's not like it's one is crazy more than the other. So once they're sprouted, they're good. 
But I will say with quinoa sprouts, you have to be careful because they're testy and those small little seeds, they can, they, they're not as easy to sprout. So if you are looking to learn how to sprout and get started, I would start with um, lentil seeds, mung bean seeds, broccoli, and radish. And I actually created, when COVID hit, I created a survival sprouting kit that has all of those seeds in it so that if you want to get started and learn how to sprout at home, we ship you all of those seeds, our seeds that we tested that are, have a really high germination rate, and we teach you how to do it. So that would be your best bet if you're looking to learn how to sprout. Thank you. Apple says, can you... Fr- um, I, I, that she freezes wheatgrass shots. What are your thoughts on nutrient viability of doing this? Yeah. So wheatgrass, we say when it's frozen is about 85, 80 to 85% as good as fresh. And the reason that we got that number is because we did do a nutritional analysis and that's what it came up as. And the reason why we even did that in the first place was because, um, there, my mom back in the eighties saw a study on frozen mother's milk and saw that frozen mother's milk was about 80 to 85% as good as fresh mother's milk retaining of the nutrients. And we often make the relation of mother's milk is to an infant as wheatgrass is to an adult because uh, mother's milk is like 85% water and 15% everything needed to sustain a baby and have it double its its weight in three months. And wheatgrass also has almost every known vitamin and mineral. Um, It's still majority water, but it's in the right proportion for what your body needs. So um, frozen, that's just a little backstory on how we got to that. But yes, frozen is great. It is super easy to uh, thaw. If you're going to do it frozen, just take the one ounce out, put it in a warm bowl of water and let it thaw in like five minutes. Don't leave it, you know, in the refrigerator overnight. Don't leave it on the counter. You want to thaw it as quickly as possible because wheatgrass is super perishable and you want to keep the enzymes alive. So thaw it, you know, as quickly as possible and it's still good to go. Great. Thank you. And Ronan says, I know you can't sprout kidney beans. Are there any other things that should not be sprouted? So yeah, those are the main ones. Uh, any, any of those, um, any of the beans, the main things that you can, rather than what can't be sprouted, let's talk about what can be. Um, garbanzo beans can, um, fenugreek, mung beans, lentils, um, broccoli, all the radishes, arugula, mustard. Um, yeah, I just wouldn't, any of the kidney beans just stay away from. And uh, if you'd like a list of your, and of, of your classic sprouting list, I can send that over to you. But um, yeah, those are the main ones that you're not supposed to sprout is the, is the kidneys. Great. Are you a plant-based person? Yes. How did, uh, did you find out about it just from the business or? Yeah, definitely. Like I went growing up, my parents used to bring me to like Hippocrates and Optum Health Institute as a little girl, instead of like going to Disneyland, that's where we would go. So I learned about raw and being plant-based since we were very little. And um, I just learned to love it because it makes me feel good. That's cool. That must've been easier for you guys at the holidays, not having a conflicted family. Well, okay, let's be real. It's not like it was always not conflicted or that everyone was always one way, not at all. Everyone was on their own journey with it. But um, I've come to the place where I feel like it's what I want to be for sure because um, I just love plants and I love fruits and vegetables. So I really love the way that I feel from having fruits and vegetables versus having meat or things that make me feel tired. All right, well, it's, it's the family business. Great. <laughs> So is, is, do you actually have a shop like the people come in in New York or is it just delivery now? So yeah, we have a shop that's in Goshen. It's like in the farm area. So it's not like it's a real storefront, but you can't pick up from the farm. But most people just get a home delivery and we have a ton of um, delivery trucks. So any we, can, we go to any inch of the tri-state region um, every week. But only in New York, right? You won't bring in them. Not, I can't get any. I'm near Palm Springs, right? Oh, you're, in, you're near Palm Springs, so then you're near, um, you're near Hippocrates. But um, no, what we have that we just created about a year ago is our raw vegan cleanse. And that is, we actually ship to you, um, not a tray like this, but a cut pound. We, cut, we ship to you the fresh product, wheatgrass, sunflower, pea, broccoli, sauerkraut, um, crackers, seeds, snacks, everything that you need to do a raw vegan cleanse at home. And that anyone in the entire country can do when we ship it to you. But that's, it will only ship to you our fresh product. Um, 
or we think it's best only to ship the fresh product if you're going to do the full cleanse with us, because then it makes it worth it, like the shipping and everything like that. So, but it's still wonderful. Um, you get a whole box of all the stuff that's hard to find. And then we give you a shopping list and we give you a meal plan, breakfast, lunch, and dinner of exactly what to, to have so that you do like a time-tested cleanse and you lose weight and you feel good. And um, that's an amazing way to get our product, even if you're not in our region. Very cool. Do you eat sprouts at every meal? Yeah. <laughs> I'm a bit of a sprout nut, as you can see. <laughs> that is so, but you eat other things as well. Yeah, of course. Um, I'm making right now from the Ultimate Raw Vegan Bundle, I'm making a uh, cauliflower curry and that's in the dehydrator right now. So I'm gonna have that for dinner. And I also have a raw vegan cleanse going on right now, a group, a cohort group that I'm doing it with. So um, we made like a big salad today with a, with a faux tuna and a dressing. So um, I'm, I'd say I'm more, I try to be more raw than just plant-based. Nice. And uh, do you have a book in the Ultimate Raw Vegan Bundle? Yes. So our book in the Ultimate Raw Vegan Bundle is called Microgreen Smoothie Recipes. Um, and that is where I just show you three minute to five minute recipes that you can make super easy in the morning for breakfast or for lunch that will fill you up and um, give you energy and give you massive amounts of nutrients and protein that you wouldn't get from anything else. And they're delicious. Cool. Did you want to make something for us? Yes, I do. Thank so, you. Um, first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make our, my favorite pina colada um, broccoli brain smoothie. So we're going to be using the famous broccoli sprouts or microgreens um, and even a little bit of sunflower. Those are the two that I usually use for making smoothies is broccoli and sunflower because they're super mild um, flavored and it's not going to be anything spicy or crazy and ruin the smoothie. So much so that you can actually barely taste it. So even though you're getting like a huge amount of packed nutrients, um, it's actually doesn't taste like any kind of crazy greens. It's more fruity and delicious. So do you guys want to get into it? Absolutely. Okay, cool. So it's super simple. It's going to take two seconds. You can time me. Are you ready? <laughs> um, first thing I'm going to do is just take a nice big handful of my broccoli. And a handful of broccoli sprouts like this is for those of you, if anybody does have like uh, something that they're trying to heal, um, whether it be they're on a healing journey with arthritis or inflammation or even cancer, um, if they're trying to go alternative and use food as, as a means of uh, improving their health, um, this is about, about a cup is about the, uh, or two ounces in the morning and two ounces in the afternoon of broccoli sprouts is the therapeutic amount. So we're gonna put a little bit of the broccoli, a little bit of sunflower. That's a ton of protein. And we're gonna use an entire quarter of a pineapple. Yum, 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 yum. Then we're going to use an entire pear. That is the secret. Pear and pineapple is incredible. And you don't use the peel of the pineapple, right? I took the peel off, yeah. I did that prep work before. <laughs> then I put a little bit of ice, and now you can put coconut water, um, sesame milk, water. I actually happen to have a little bit of sesame milk that I made for the curry. So I'm gonna put a little bit of that sesame milk in, and it's about four ounces of liquid. So I'll put a little bit of that and a little bit of water. And let's see what happens. Let's move it up. Oh. Sorry guys. Okay, ready? Sometimes with the vitamins you gotta shake it a little bit. You guys know that. Yeah, or you the time. Or use the tamper. Yeah. I don't know where mine is though. I just take it. I'm old school. Just take it around. Give it some love. See, it has this beautiful light green color. It's not like a scary green or an ugly green. Oh, 
and that's it. Let me get myself a cup. I wonder if they have a company like yours on the West Coast where they actually deliver the microgreens. I would eat more of them if somebody brought them to me because I tried sprouting and I got just, well, lasted a couple of weeks and I gave up. It was like I had to remember and, you know. Mm -hmm. So good. It's really, really, really so good. It takes two seconds and it's a crazy amount of nutrients. Um, if you are looking to sprout at home um, and you didn't really love the process of it, um, there are some tips, like I would just do it in bulk, you know, like sprout a lot so that you don't have to constantly be replenishing and just stick to the easy ones so that you don't get frustrated. So like lentil and mung bean, those are the easiest. Um, if you want to start growing the sunnies, we do have a, um, advanced sprouting kit that comes with the trays and the soil and the seeds for this and a grow light. So it's like foolproof and you're going to have like perfect trays just like this. Um, and it's super, it's not so hard to do. So yeah, you can get that advanced sprouting kit. Um, but like I said, I mean, you wouldn't be interested in doing the cleanse obviously, but although maybe I could send you one and you could promote it. <laughs> anybody who is watching this that is new or on the journey or even has been doing it for a long time and wants to get back into doing a cleanse. I mean, I can't stress enough how wonderful getting stuff delivered to you and having structure is to starting a journey. It's like so essential um, to successfully feeling good. Have you ever, like, what's your experience with cleanses? Do you have any? Um, well, I just only going to True North, you know, going to the True North Health Center. It's all done for you there. You just show up. You don't have to do anything. Yeah. So that's the thing is like, it's one thing to just show up and go to a place like that, which is wonderful. But it's another thing to actually, first of all, a lot of people can't afford that. Hippocrates is like $2,500 a week. And a lot of people need it, especially if they're sick. Um, and, or if they just need to lose a lot of weight really quickly, like you, you can, by eating this way, you can lose like five pounds a week. Of course you have to maintain it, but it's a really easy way to lose weight quickly. So if people need the results, but they don't know how to do it, they can't go to one of these institutes, the, it's, you, there's no shortcuts. You can't like, um, you can't just try and wing it on your own. It's, you can, but it's not nearly as easy or successful as when I literally lay it out for you and give you step-by-step -step, um, a guide of a shopping list and a meal plan and breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and we're with you together. It's like so challenging to um, know what to eat when you're going wrong. What was, what's, what's your experience with like when you first started doing this and like knowing how to get into it? Well, you know, I'm not wrong, but when I was raw, I was using the raw food delivery service <laughs> to bring me my meals. I really, yeah, was. It's really hard to do it yeah. without support. And the way that I created this program is like making it actually doable. Every single person who does my program is like, I can't believe how easy and doable it is, but only because you have the structure and that's like the missing link, the structure and support for um, improving your lifestyle with this. So um, I think that that was kind of like the next step for us was we were like, okay, we have this beautiful product but people don't know how to use it. <laughs> people don't know how to use it and uh, they're not using it enough because they don't realize wh how they can feel if they use it at a certain level. Nice. Well, that all that information is in the show notes. So if you're watching on YouTube, just look below this video. If you're on Facebook, you gotta go look on YouTube and you'll see it's all written there. If you wanna do that, that sounds fantastic. Thank you so much for having me. Well, thanks for being so spontaneous and teaching us the difference between sprouts and microgreens. The thing is, is get some of them in at least, you know, right? Yeah, just get something in. Um, wheatgrass, sprouts, we have a local spot. Um, and uh, yeah, just do your, it's, it's also a good resource for when you're not sure what to eat and you're like, you know what? I don't want to change everything. I don't want to go completely raw. I don't want to do, I just want to add good stuff in. So when you want to add good stuff in, this is a good thing to add. Absolutely. You don't have to be 100% raw to, to take advantage of the ultimate raw vegan bundle. It's just amazing recipes and at less than a dollar per offering 50, 55 books. I don't think you'll even get through them during your lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> All the recipes. So yeah, well, thanks. It was so nice to meet you, Rebecca. It's Thank you so much. Thank for your spontaneity. And if you guys want to know more about microgreens and sprouts, 
just click on the link below and uh, enjoy. Have a take good care. Day, everybody. Thanks, Chef AJ. Thanks so much. Thanks everyone for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow. And my guest is from the Ultimate Raw Vegan Bundle, Alyssa Maris, making jalapeno, yeah, jalapeno poppers from her Raw Party book, all brand new recipes. And at 11 o'clock, Dr. John McDougall. Take care. Enjoy.